Hi everybody, this is Vera Samad, author of Nutrition and Hair Loss. I've had quite a few people emailing me in recent weeks about COVID-induced hair loss and so I thought I would make a video about this because there's just so many people emailing me about it. It seems to be affecting males and females, adults and children alike, so it's pretty indiscriminate in how it affects people. I have a theory as to why COVID is causing hair loss and I also have a theory on how it can be remediated. First clip I want to show you guys is one of a neuroscientist and a neurooncologist at Stanford University. I want you guys to understand what the medical establishment is saying about uh, COVID-induced brain inflammation because I do believe that it's related. The hair loss is related to the brain inflammation caused by COVID. So take a look at this video first. Inflammation in the brain can cause dysregulation of a number of different cell types and have lasting consequences to cognitive function. Understanding that when the pandemic struck and we saw how profoundly immunogenic, how profoundly inflammatory, um, even relatively mild cases of COVID could be, I really worried about a neurological health crisis. And I think we're watching that unfold right now. The rates of persistent cognitive symptoms in people who have recovered from COVID um, is, is frankly alarming. We need to understand how to intervene and offer effective therapy, or there are going to be just millions of people suffering with these persistent cognitive symptoms. What we discovered in the laboratory, in mice that have relatively mild respiratory COVID, and then in human samples, COVID elicits such a profound inflammatory response in the brain. And as a result of that, brain cells that need to work together um, in order to communicate and, and function normally were dysregulated. And what we studied was how the immune response to infection that was limited to the respiratory system could cause inflammation in the brain through signaling molecules that go from the lung, through the blood, and to the brain. We found pretty high levels of um, inflammatory molecules called cytokines and chemokines in the central nervous system just from mild respiratory infection. And together with that, we saw um, inflammation in a particular kind of brain immune cell, which is called a microglia. When microglia and astrocytes become reactive, they then can cause dysregulation of another kind of glial cell that form the insulation around axons, quite literally like the insulation on a wire. When that happens, the neurons, the communicating cells in the brain, can't communicate with each other in their normal way, not, not as quickly and, and not as well. And so that can cause dysregulation of the whole circuit and cause cognitive impairment. Okay, so what this doctor was saying, this doctor from Stanford University, is that they believe that the immune response, the body's immune response to COVID-19 is eliciting uh, inflammation in the brain. It's causing inflammation to brain cells, neurons, and the myelin sheath. All three of these are related to the hair. If any one of them are under inflammatory stress, then it can cause hair loss. They believe that the body's causing this in response to GoFit. I have a slightly different theory. My belief as a polymath and as a student of the natural world is that all microorganisms, whether they be bac uh, bacteria, virus, parasite, fungus, and many others, is that these microorganisms serve the role of janitors in the natural world. Their job is to decompose, break down uh, sick, weak, decaying, or dead cells. Their job in their, world, their role in nature is to break down organic matter, whether it be grass, trees, leaves, uh, whatever it be, any organic matter. Their job is to break it down into the simplest particles, which is how we build soil ultimately, which is how we build compost. So when a virus comes into the body, it's going to break down and saponify or turn into a soap or liquefy cells which are polluted with environmental pollutants, um, industrial waste products, heavy metals, cooked food metabolites, and so on. Now, I'm going to play a clip now of a nutritional pioneer by the name of Arginus von der Planet. In my opinion, he is Western, one of Western civilization's greatest nutritionists. I'm going to play a short clip of what he has to say about microorganisms. Well, let me explain what a flu is. A flu is a, uh, is a solvent detoxification. A cold is normally a bacterial detoxification where microbes eat damaged tissue that is of a waste product, and when they consume that tissue, they can consume about 50 times their weight 24 hours, and they have a waste product of about 1 to 5%. So that's like you eating um, uh, 50 pounds of food in one day and having a 1 to 5 pound waste product to deal with the next day. That's a good janitor. <laughs> really? You know, so we want colds. Now, flus occur when people are so toxic that uh, bacteria cannot help break down the 
toxic waste products that there's because there's inorganic substances like chemicals from uh, pesticides, uh, fertilizer, you know, inorganic fertilizers, uh, food additives, uh, you know, Pepsi Cola, all those sodas which are just chemical. They have nothing to do with food. Uh, when those chemicals get in the body and saturate the body and they destroy the bacteria, then our bodies have to use, have to make a solvent or many varieties of solvents to dissolve tissue. So the body may make about 300,000 types of viruses that are specific to a specific tissue within a particular cell so that the whole cell isn't, uh, its integrity isn't disrupted. So the whole cell doesn't die. It's just cleaning out, let's say, the veins in a particular area of the cell, uh, whether it be the veins for neuro neurological functions or lymphatic, which is cleansing, uh, or the blood itself within the cell. Uh, so those are specific cleansing viruses uh, for specific areas in the body. So as you see, there's an entirely different worldview of what viruses do. Yeah, they can come into the body and make us sick and give us flu-like symptoms, but what they are doing at the very root, at the foundation, if you really look at it objectively, is that they are saponifying and liquefying weak and toxic cells that we have. And there are some people who cannot survive this natural detoxification process they go under, unfortunately. This is just one of nature's many systems in which she weeds out the, the weak from the strong. Now, in those who have COVID-related hair loss, brain fog, brain fatigue, uh, and other forms of neurological disorders, I believe that when they did contract COVID, the detoxification process or the saponification process of their brain cells and um, neurons and myelin sheath was to such a great extent that it caused damage. Because you have to understand that the body will amalgamate and concentrate environmental pollutants and heavy metals inside of our fat tissues. And there is no other organ which is more fatty in the human body than the brain. The brain is the, the primary fatty organ in the human body. And the myelin sheath, which coats and protects the nerves, is made up entirely of fat. And these heavy metals and industrial pollutants, they get lodged into the fat. They don't get lodged into the lean muscle or even the water weight of the body. So why does this cause hair loss? Well, hair is only an extension of the nerves. That's all that hair is. It's literally, literally an external extension of the nervous system. There are many people who lose their sense of taste, their sense of smell, and this is indicative of nervous system damage. Now, hair loss is no different. The hair loss after COVID is also indicative of nervous system damage. In order to remediate this process, what you need to do is give the nerves the raw building blocks they need in order for proper cellular turnover. If you've read my book, Nutrition and Hair Loss, or if you have watched any of my previous videos, you understand how important topical oil nourishment is for the brain, the nerves, and the hair. In my book and in my research, I have recorded countless primitive, isolated, and traditional cultures across time and space who used some source of animal fat or plant oil and applied it onto their scalp and hair. And what that did was, first off, it gave them amazing hair, but more important was that it directly, topically fortified their brain, their nerves, their neurons, and fed the myelin sheath with essential fatty acids because these cells are made of exactly essential fatty acids. I highly advise also you take some kind of high quality cold pressed seed oil orally adults one to two tablespoons a day children one to two teaspoons a day and consuming that orally like an olive oil or an avocado oil will give the body the building blocks as well in order to regenerate myelin sheath and brain cells the problem is if you take it orally the entire body competes for the essential fatty acid all the glands wanted all the cells want essential fatty acids and you can't really take enough you'll get sick if you have too much of even the highest quality <clears throat> the benefit of applying an oil topically onto the scalp, find any great hair oil that's organic that you like, is that you bypass this natural competitive process which exists within the human body, within human physiology. You can feed, nourish, feed and nourish the brain, the neurons, the myelin sheath directly. And the brain will take these oils, these essential fatty acids, and use them to rebuild brain cells, neurons, myelin sheath. Initially, you may have more shedding when you apply the oil. Will 
in a sense, absorb any heavy metals and industrial pollutants which are in the brain tissue and bring them out to the surface. The oil does this because heavy metals and industrial pollutants, they can only travel through phospholipids. So if you apply hair on the oil and you're having hair loss, you may have a little bit more initially, but it will stop. You just have to be consistent, take it every other day or every three days. And the oils eventually, not only will they feed and nourish the brain, but they also cleanse and detoxify it. And you know, I think it's great for children and adults alike. This is a time-tested practice. This is not a new product. Olive oils and uh, avocado oils and almond oils. Our ancestry have been using this since time immemorial, since before Rome, before China, before Greece. There's over 6,000 years of history of using this stuff. The stuff that's lining this, the uh, shelves at the pharmacy store is new chemistry created for, the, for modern people, which has had no merit. There's no proof any of it works. There's actually ample evidence that it just damages people instead, that it damages your brain cells, right? None of this stuff actually works. So again, use time-tested methods. I hope that you found this video helpful and useful. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like, a thumbs up. And please go ahead and comment your experiences with COVID-19 and hair loss and any questions you may have. When I have free time, I will try to get back to you guys. My name is Var Samad. I'm a polymath, a regenerative agriculturist and author of many books. Thank you.